Though the ridgeback spider is far smaller than the funnel web, its venom is more potent. No deaths have occurred since an anti-venom was developed in 1956, but its bite is still enough to cause serious illness. Well, it just started hurting um, after a little while and then started to stop in the morning. Mitchell Briley lives in Brisbane. Three different doctors were unable to correctly diagnose his redback bite. Thanks to his mother Karen's perseverance, he was eventually treated 43 hours later. Well, he was bitten about 8.30 on the Saturday night. Well, he, wasn't, he didn't get injected with the anti-venine until about quarter to three on the Monday. They're in plague proportions around here, and it's just a shame that I couldn't understand why the doctors couldn't pick it up. This was probably due to the fact that the actual bite is often painless and puncture marks aren't always evident. Other symptoms like muscular weakness, paralysis, loss of coordination, vomiting and fainting may only develop later. Redbacks are found throughout Australia. Their preference for urban environments and the ability to colonise them quickly seems to suggest that they're an introduced species. They usually head for dark, dry places, and our suburban streets and homes provide plenty of them. They will build anywhere, and often where you might least expect. A redback's web is one of nature's great feats in engineering. It's divided into two sections, the larger funnel section for shelter and the bottom section for trapping prey. The brilliance in engineering lies in these fine sticky lines known as trip lines. Between them run guy lines. When an insect becomes entangled in here, the guy lines snap and the trip lines haul the food back to the spider's den. Unlike funnel webs, redbacks are very small. The brightly coloured female grows to about a centimetre. Only she is capable of killing a human, and she's at her most dangerous when she's defending her eggs in the web. Females can store sperm for up to two years and lay hundreds of eggs. These egg sacs are resistant to insecticide, so killing the adult is no guarantee of destroying an infestation. Once redbacks are established in an area, they're almost impossible to wipe out. These scanning electron microscope shots show the difference in the two spider's fangs. The funnel web hunts for its prey, so its fangs are strong and powerful. They're curved because they strike downwards in order to inject their venom. The female redback's fangs are much shorter and smaller by comparison. It relies on its web to trap victims, so the fangs don't need the same strength. They curve inwards and act like pincers. Yet the redback's venom is more toxic. Fortunately, it takes longer for it to take effect. But the redback spider's bites are still the greatest single cause of envenomation in Australia more than snakes and marine stingers combined. One effective way of controlling redbacks is to leave other spiders' webs intact around the house. Spiders like the daddy longlegs feed on redbacks. Looks can be deceiving. Most of us wouldn't have any problem at all handling one of these daddy longleg spiders, but it's actually the world's most venomous spider. Fortunately, its fangs aren't long enough to pierce human skin.